so every so often in the mirror myself, so I may have to check the camera that I'm talking to in order to if you come in late, I will have to uh, you know I'll have to admit that I don't have anybody help me. Apologize. Um for those of you that don't know me, uh, my name is Kurt Spot. It's a little weird because you're all in cyberspace and there's nobody sitting here. So that's a sad face there. I would much rather be seeing everybody in person, but I get it. It's better than driving around, right? Um, today, what I want to talk about was how you prep your clients, both your buyers and your sellers, to have a successful inspection. Um, as the realtor, a lot of what you can do is emotional uh, management. And so, if you can, you know, if you take any sales training, they say that you need to make sure that you. Uh, Overcome objections before they come, become objections. So, if you can have your sellers and your buyers in the right frame of mind with everything set up as, as good as possible, you will you will avoid a lot of chaos. And um, I heard this one sports guy talking about you know uh, presidents. He's like, you never get you never get uh, credit for the chaos that you avoid. So, hopefully today I will help you avoid a lot of chaos. So, and again, I'm not a player, so I'm not a right here. Way. Um, okay, so let's talk about sellers first. This will not be the longest training ever. Again, we're just talking about the prep clients. Um, can't read that. I apologize. It's a little bit small. I know it's big on screen. Um, depending on the inspection company, you're going to want anywhere from two to maybe even as many as like five or six hours. And you want to make sure that your clients just just kind of get out of dodge, right? You don't want, you don't want them to stay. Um, there's, I'll talk about some more, but there's if the house is really huge, they're gonna call you today for like a 12 pounds square foot, it's seven and a half million dollar house. And they're like, How many days does it take? And luckily, I can bring four inspectors, we can bring termites, sewer, get it all done at the same time. But I mean, it's still that size house, a lot of windows, a lot of doors, a lot of outlets, probably five or six HVACs, probably need five or six hours on site there. So, a normal size house, you know, you got about two hours for the inspection, and then 30, 40 minutes for the uh, uh, for the for the walkthrough of the client. Um, so here's the reason you don't want to be present. Um, you don't want to, you want to tell your clients not to be present. Whenever they tell the inspector, they are potentially liable for. So you want to tell them, hey guys, don't be there. I mean, again, if they're there, I shut them off and they'll say, hey, get down the roof. But if they accidentally say, I know the roof is two, three years old, um, and it's actually 12 or 13 years old, and we write down whatever inspection company writes down. Two to three years old per seller, they're literally liable for that. So that the buyer can come back later and go, Well, your seller told me, blah, blah, blah. So anything they tell us, they're potentially liable for it. Um, get rid of your pets. Again, I always, people go, Hey, do you like dogs? I love all dogs. I love all cats. You don't all love me, right? So it's hard when we're going in and out, back and forth, the cat might scooch past, like whatever the thing might be, it's just best to try and get the pets out of the house so that. We are not responsible for them, but at the same time, uh, we are uh, as much as we might like them. You know, now it is possible that you need multiple windows. I'm literally dealing with a thing this morning where we went to go do the sewer scope. The vent on the roof was damaged. There were no exterior cleanouts, and now the listing agent is all kinds of upset because the sewer scope guy wants to come back um, today or tomorrow when we did the inspection last week. He's like, I opened the house for you last week. You got to understand that there might be multiple windows. Another example, if you have a termite inspection, you know, our termite people do 20, 30 houses a day. So they cannot always be there in the two hour window of the home inspection. So it's not abnormal for them to call and say, hey, do you mind if we come? I know the inspection at 1 p.m. Do you mind if we come at 8? And again, if you just prep your clients and have a conversation with them, say, hey, we're trying to sell the house. We need to make it accessible to the buyers and to all their different inspections that they want to look at. Um, so you just gotta be ready to go, okay, we're trying to sell a house, let's let's you know let, let's let's all be a little uh what's the word you know, uh, you know, let's all be flexible I think that would be the best word. So that's that's a thing you get your sellers ready. Like I realize that it's their house and some people are gonna get very this is my house, but you know we're like it's a piece of property that you're trying to sell and new people want it to be their house, and so some flexibility will go a long way. Okay, um, make sure all the utilities are on. I can't tell you what frustration it is, and people have to pay us to make uh, additional trips. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, 
when you know the realtor didn't make sure that the water's on, the electricity's on, the gas is on. Um, and then again, so this is a large portion of the house that we can't evaluate. And all, it was would have been a really simple fix just making sure the water and the gas up. Now, if you're a newer realtor, which I would suspect many of you are, because you know, if you've done 100 inspections, you would just have to take this class. Um, we as inspectors cannot turn on, you know, water. We can't light pilot lights. We can't um, do a lot of these different things. And the reason behind that is because are you in the class? Oh, come on in. There's like a bunch of people online, but you're the only guy. Uh, we got someone. Yes. Come on in. Occur. Angel. Angel. Nice to meet you. Your, your front center. We got somebody. Yes. Um, so here's the thing with uh, fireplaces, uh, gas furnaces, gas water meters, if the pilot light is not lit, uh, we can't light it because, one, we're not paying them, it's not in their job. But most importantly, like, we don't know why that's turned off. The gas pilot light uh, the, in, the, in the fireplace might be turned off because, um, because it's turned off in summer, or it might be turned off because the valve is leaking. We don't know the difference. And again, it's not our house. You're there to do a visual inspection only, not do a uh, invasive inspection. We don't have permission to turn these things on. So again, that's an important thing for your sellers and your buyers to understand that hey, we are just there to evaluate the house as it stands. We're not there to change light bulbs and do all these weird things that if we just don't have permission to do. Um, <laughs> bring this up. This is again, it's a personal preference, but you know, you might want to have the dishes done. If you don't have laundry everywhere, um, you know, all of these things impact our ability to do an inspection. So, um, you know, if the, if the washer and dryer is full of, of laundry, it's hard for us to run the washer and dryer so we can't prove to the buyers that the washer and dryer is actually working properly. It also means that we can't prove that the washing machine is leaking and, you know, just on and on and on. So, if you can make the house as close to new, just imagine if you were selling a car. You wouldn't leave all of your personal stuff in the car. You would have the car cleaned up, ready to go, all the personal stuff out of it. So as much as you could do that with a house, it really does help the inspection process go smoothly. Um, accessibility. If we can't access something, we have to write down we can't access it. So we, if there's a million things in the garage is totally full, and um, you know we can't get the attic access to the garage, we just have to write that down. We can't go moving all kinds of personal stuff because if something breaks, they're going to want to hold a slot. Um, the attic is usually the number one thing that uh, uh, we, we can't access. We have to write it down, and then they go, well, we want you to come back to look at the attic once all the stuff is gone. And of course, since we're sending inspectors all over town, we have to charge for that. Our reinspection fee is usually $150. So usually it's on the list side. If they didn't make something accessible, we have to come back, whether that be the water not turned on, the electric not turned on, the gas not turned on, or the attic not accessible. That's kind of the listing agent's fault. Um, not the agent's fault, so just the list size is their responsibility. Um, pool equipment. Um, pool equipment's come a long way in the last 10, 15 years. A lot of people, especially with nicer pools, everything is controlled from their phone. So we, our clients are looking for us to operate all the pool equipment and make sure everything's working properly. Sometimes it's getting really tricky and it's not totally clear. So, and sometimes it's actually on their phone. We can't actually turn everything on for that Phones. Either having clients with nicer houses leave all that stuff on when we get there, um, or leave directions on how to, for us to turn it on. Because again, we're not mind readers, we don't know if every single system is out there. Um, again, a lot of times doors, um, little laundry rooms, access of those storage rooms, and especially electrical panels, people like to put the little locks on so people don't mess with them, which is fine and great, but you can either let us know what the key is. Or you need to unlock those things before we get there. Because again, we just have to go put an access electric panel, and then of course the buyer truck ready to come out. Um, as you get into nicer houses, you might have, you know, walk-in blind fridges. Um, again, I, I've done houses with point ponds. Um, if there's anything that's sort of outside the norm, all you have to do on the listing side is leave us directions so that it's either like, hey, don't touch that, or it's not included or, excuse me, this is how it's operated, or we left it running for you, please turn it off, you know, whatever the case might be. Like, again, some of that stuff is beyond the scope of all inspection, but of course, if the walk-in wine fridge has a little cooler, humidifier, whatever, um, 
will show that that's operating at our port. So uh, if you want to make the inspector's life easier, because the easier our life is, the more we can show the buyer how everything is just ready to go and there's no problems. And again, that makes your sale just move much more smoothly. Um, remote controls, people always hide those. Some fireplaces are turned on, fans are turned on. Um, sometimes they're just sitting there like on the wall. Uh, but a lot of times it would make sense just to pull them all out, make sure they're labeled. And again, that way we can't, we don't have to write down something like, you know, the fan in three bedrooms would work because we know what the remote control is. So again, it's all common sense here. Um, okay, you've got to prep your sellers, you've got to coach them, right? You're, you're not just the realtor selling a house, you're like an emotional manager, right? So you have to let them know that they get a lot, they get confused. They haven't bought a house in five, six, seven years. Maybe they remember the appraisal. I've had people go, oh, wait, why are you doing all this stuff? I thought you were just going to do it for like 15 minutes. And they keep thinking of the appraiser, not the uh, inspector. So we need to operate everything. If you work with us, you'll see our inspection reports. We, we show videos inside the attic, the roof, the um, inside the electrical panel. We test AFCIs, we test GFCIs, we test all the outlets, doors, windows, um, everything. We have to turn on the heat, we have to turn on the AC. <laughs> we operate the garage door. And so if your client is there with their three kids and their two dogs, and they're like making dinner and you're going, oh, I didn't know that you were needing to do all this. No offense, but that's your fault. Like you need to coach them up and say, listen, get out of there. They need to operate everything. We're emotion free about it. It's to them, it's their home. To us, it's just a piece of property, but we need to operate everything and make sure that it's all working properly. And we need to document all that. And again, if we can't, then we have to document that we couldn't. And you know, when you have one of those buyers that says, well, how come you couldn't go on the electrical panel? How come you couldn't go on the app? How come you couldn't test this? How come you couldn't test that? And go, well, what's the data available to us? So remember, as the listing agent, those are the things you want to do, again, to smooth out the transaction on your end. All right. Um, again, more of the same, right? Um, we photo and video everything either working or the reason we couldn't work it. So if the attic was blocked, We'll say we'll take a picture of the access to the attic, why we couldn't get to it. Um, we take model and serial numbers of all the appliances and your systems. Um, okay, so your seller owns their house, they're very proud of it. They're like, this is my home, we're not gonna find anything. We always find stuff, even if it's supervised brand new home, we find things, we find missing insulation, we can find leaky faucets, we can find cough that deteriorates. I mean, I really have a brand new house. That I bought was finished in April of 2021. And I've already repopped the main bathroom shower once, and it looks like it already needs it again. So, again, if somebody came to inspect it right now, they would write down, hey, okay, the popping in the main bathroom just looks like crap and should, should be fixed because what will happen, right? If you let that go long enough, the wall will start to leak and it'll go down to the second floor, the whole thing. Um, okay. It is the favoriteest thing of people to sort of walk in and go, what's that crack? So the way that we evaluate a house is we start on the outside and we have to work our way in. So when you're a buyer or yourself, what do you think of that crack? I won't have any idea until I've done the exterior, until I've done the roof, until I've done uh, the attic, and we kind of work our way in. Because if you saw like a drainage issue on the outside of the house, because the, the earth is sloping towards the house instead of the way from the house, Okay, maybe that's a five dollar uh, thing of, of soil that you need to get from Depot to fix that, or maybe it's been going on long enough that the foundation is deteriorated. Maybe it's been some settling, uh, you know, and maybe some doors and windows aren't shutting right. And then when you take all of that and add it together, and you go, know, "Oh, that's a settling crack." And you're, yeah, that settling crack has started all the way on the exterior from from this drainage issue because we're because we're not getting. We're not getting the water away from the house going on. So um, I, we don't always have all of the answers until we've had an opportunity to evaluate the entire structure from top to bottom and inside and out. Um, and again, don't shoot the messengers. We're just there. Look, at the end of the day, we're motion free. I do really sketchy mobile homes up in Bayer, right? And I do, like I was selling seven and a half million dollars, 12,000 houses. I'm not overly impressed with anything. I'm not under impressed with anything. Some people want to buy something that's completely torn, like in, in really, really bad shape because they want to get a good price on it and they want to fix it up. And other people think that, you know, every house should be perfect. So again, we are just there to 
make observations, document observations, and then explain those observations to your client. Um, if the garage door breaks while we hit the button, like we didn't break the garage door, it's kind of like if you if you let your friend drive your car and the transmission breaks while they're driving it, like they didn't break the transmission. The transmission broke while they were driving. So if through the normal course of inspecting, you know, a window does comes off its thing or the door handle breaks or or the garage door has an issue, that is actually an issue that we wrote down and it's a good thing that we got. Um, Okay, I read this great article in six, seven months ago, and it was really, it was interesting. It said, basically, if humans disappeared from Earth, um, there would be zero, um, there would be zero evidence that we were ever here in a thousand years. So, like, every bridge, every tall building, everything that humans have ever built would literally be completely gone in a thousand years, and you would never know that we were here. So, again, I tell that story. To say, hey, the house you're buying, you're basically like stepping into a maintenance uh, plan. And if you ignore or defer the maintenance and don't do it, the house will start to deteriorate. It'll start to get wet, it starts to get damaged from water. Um, and, and if you don't do that, then you have to come back in a couple years, it will be in worse condition than the day you bought it. So some people forget. I mean, and it's funny, I found that the nicer the house, the quicker they forget. Because you have a six million dollar house, four million dollar house. You're probably not running around doing cloth and checking your, you know, the backside of the wall and like pool equipment. Um, but all of those things are going to deteriorate in time, just the things do. Uh, so yeah, just I, I use that joke because everything, everything will be gone in a thousand years. So it's our job, like doing the maintenance, um, to keep the houses above ground. I'll, I'll give you one more example. If you had a young person, a niece or nephew, and they bought a, a car, a used car, with six thousand miles on it. And then you talk to them, and 15,000 miles in six months have gone by, and then their engine blows up, and you go, well, just change the oil. You go, they say no, you go, well, I mean, like, yeah, that's what happens. You don't change the oil, things happen. Same thing with houses. You got to keep the water on the outside, you know, and the air quality on the inside. All right. So, pro tips clean up, um, make, make everything accessible. Um, replace burnt out light bulbs. This seems like a stupid common sense thing to say, but here's the problem, right? We realize that if above the bathroom, you know, the sink, there's a light burnt out, 99.9% .9 chance it's just a burnt out light. And we write it up as such. But there is always a small possibility that there's some kind of internal wiring problem, and that's the reason that it's not working. So as a listing agent, the number one thing you can do is go through the house before the inspection. By the way, you should do this before you're even showing it. So the house shows them. And just make sure every light bulb is not burnt out. Work from. Um, light fireplaces. I, I mean, yeah, great opportunity. I did like a two and a half million dollar house down in Akatio. And, um, and the, the listing agent showed up at the beginning of the inspection. He goes, hey, listen, I know you can't do this. He turned the pool on. He turned all the pool equipment on. Uh, he lit the three fireplaces. I got photos of them all working fine. We turned them all off. He took off. And he understood that all those weird things that we can't normally do, he did them. The first five minutes of inspection worked out perfect. And then the buyer had all the evidence in our report, photos, videos, et cetera, that everything was working properly. So that was an ideal situation. Um, and don't take our findings personally. We're just there to write things down. Our job is to act as a home buyer advisor and make sure that people don't inherit problems unknowingly. So we try to be fair to the fact that there's a buyer, a seller, and both of their realtors, and everybody kind of has a different bias, right? The sellers think their house is perfect and they just want to sell it. The buyers want to make sure they don't have any problems and don't want any have to fix any expensive. The realtors both want the deal to go through without anybody throwing any, you know, wrenches in it. Um, but again, we're just there to write things. We're there to make observations and write things down. Nothing more than that. We don't have a we don't have a stake in it. We don't have a bias. We can really just do it. A good inspector does not care. They're not inspect. They're not impressed with the big house. And they're not. They're not. You know, disappointed with a credit house. Um, again, I highly recommend to tell your clients not to be present. You missed this, but I said basically anything your your seller tells us, they're liable for. So if they make a mistake and tell us that the roof is two years old, was like twelve years old. And we write that down two years old for the seller. Then later on, when the buyer finds out it's actually 12 years old, you have some legal problems there because the, the, the seller told us something that wasn't accurate. Right. 
So in this case, the seller will would be um liable, right? Yeah, they would not be liable for it would be no different than if they put wrong information on the seller's store. Well, same kind of liability. Yeah. So again, if you don't know, say you don't know, but sometimes people get they start talking and then they blurt stuff out. But I'll tell you, I owned an inspection business in the 2000s in uh, Orlando, Florida, and we had four hurricanes come through in 2004, across billions of dollars stand. So later, 2010, 2011, 2012, we're doing insurance inspections, home inspections, whatever, and we'd say, hey, when did you do a new roof? They're like, I don't know, like two, two, three years ago? And I'm like, was it right after the hurricanes? And they go, yeah, 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 hurricanes wrapped our roof and we got a new roof. That was seven years ago, eight years ago. So people just misremember that. So again, that's why it's important to get your seller out of the house and just let us focus on the property without them being personally involved and it being their home. Okay, <laughs> this is our thing, um, but most good home inspectors, home inspection companies will have this. We actually leave this little checklist behind for your seller. We've had complaints in the past, right? Where somebody goes, we left our windows open. We left our, listen, we leave everything exactly how we're fine. If three of the windows are unlocked, we leave them unlocked. If three of the doors are unlocked, we leave them unlocked. If, if three of the windows are open, we leave them open. And it's really funny, the first thing we do is go around and take all four elevation photos. So when someone calls and goes, the inspector left our doors and windows open, we literally show them the photos to show, hey, when we walked up to the house, here's the photos of everything that would look like right when we walked up before we did it. We left everything exactly how it was. So this is our exit checklist. Before we leave the house, doors locked and closed. Again, we're back to the original position. Um, we do the same thing. AC and heat. We don't want to like, you know, we don't want to test the air conditioner. <coughs> Turning it down to like 68 and the, the, the seller had it at 74. So we always make sure that we leave it at whatever we found that. Um, oven still turned off, which I'll tell you. Uh, it, we're always doing the appliances last and it's very scary. Because you drive home 20 minutes, you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't turn that stove off. That stove's so, so much for the oven. So we have a little trick where we leave the oven open if we can. So that way, because what ends up happening is the buyers and the realtors show up, start chatting, and you go, that's right, you have to turn the stove in the oven. So it's part of our checklist. Um, all the lights and fans back off, GSKs and ASKs reset. Um, and then you know, we just check this line so they have our contact info in the rear page when something come up. Uh, so Ronax asked if we look at the spuds. Um, I'm going to say two things to that. Yes, happy to look at the spuds, um, but we're not there to verify the spuds. So we're there to do a very specific inspection directed by the state of Arizona and directed by Internachi, the National Association of Certified Home Inspectors. Um, so I'm happy to look at the spuds. I'm happy to even go, hey, that looks like the repairs they made are pretty good. But we want to be clear for the buyer that they're not there to the spuds verification, so to speak. Now, we might find discrepancies, but again, and again, it's a little bit of a cheat sheet. If they go, hey, we had a leak here, we fixed it, and we use our thermal camera, then we're, that helps us out. So happy to look at the spuds. Thanks for the question, Okay. okay. <laughs> the buyer. Um, and again, if you're newer, my guess is you might have some buyer clients before you have seller clients. It is really important for you to coach them up and basically let them, like, like get them prepared emotionally and, and I guess, like, literally for the inspection. So the first thing is, um, okay, it is not the end all be all. First of all, if we're there working for the buyer and the buyer's agent, that we don't own the house, and you don't own the house, and your client doesn't own the house. Some third party owns the house. So we are limited to what we can do. Um, it is, you know, when you first start inspection training, the instructor will usually do something like this. You go, put your hands behind your back and walk through the house. That's the scope of the home inspection. Like, obviously, that's a little bit, you know, over the top. We do a little bit more than that. Um, but we're there to function test everything, operate everything under normal circumstances. We're not there to take things apart. We don't take the furnace apart any more than you would expect to walk into a house and have us expect to see us with the refrigerator apart. So I say free on It's like it is a limited visual examination with function test of all the major systems. That, that, that. So on some things we go a little deeper than people expect, and other things we don't go nearly deep. And I'll talk about that yet. Um, 
okay. So I've seen some inspection companies call themselves like finish line. It's a terrible name, I'll tell you why. Uh, you, we are not the finish, okay? I, the general practice doctor, let me explain you what I mean that. You've got a little pain in your side, right? So you go to your general practice doctor, and the doctor said they check your blood, uh, they, sorry, they, they check your blood pressure, they check your heart, they your lungs, the nurse interviews you, they ask you what supplements you're taking, <coughs> they weigh you, um, and then the doctor goes, well, I have some ideas, these symptoms indicate blank, 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 right? And then they go, my recommendation is they would go see a thyroid specialist. And what's the thyroid specialist do? The thyroid specialist has special tests, special medicine, special tools where they can look, and they can go deeper based on that one specific thing. We do the same thing, I'll tell you a story. I had a beer with a realtor years ago, and um, he said, well, if I was gonna buy another house, I want, Uh, I want, you know, structural and environmental and plumbing and electrical and, yeah, the problem is that's going to cost like $4,000. So what we do is you hire us for five or 600 and we tell you, hey, you don't need 11 of those people, but these two, maybe it's environmental and electrical, we would recommend you bring them in to do a deeper dive. It is not an exhaustive electrical inspection. It's not an exhaustive structural. I mean, I know it's all about mold, lead paint, asbestos. But I don't dive into that in every single inspection that we do because that's not what the home inspection is. Um, we don't have all the answers, but we don't know why someone would do that. I get asked all the time, why does we do that? Like, I have no idea. Like, I don't, it's crazy, it's weird, and I have zero clue why, but it's causing an issue now, and so we gotta get someone to fix it. Why somebody did that in 1989? I do not know. Um, the 11 trades, sorry, I just told you. Um, anything else? So again, just remember, the, the most important thing to remember is that we are generalists. Like, there's there's a lot of us that know a lot about a lot of different things, but I don't know as much as an electrical engineer. I don't know as much as a structural engineer. I don't know as much as a hydrogeologist. Like, so sometimes, just like the doctor example, I find problems or symptoms of problems, and then I tell you, hey, you gotta bring in that person that does that thing for a living to go a little deeper. And I'm sure that in your, Previous, you know, career, you, you, you find the same thing. Lots of people work on at home smart right now. Lots of people work at home smart, and I can go to one person. Go, hey, tell me about blending blank, and he or she's gonna go. Dude, you gotta go over there. Like, they're going. To go. So it's the same exact kind of story in the long All right. Another thing. Uh, this is one of the reasons we don't talk about it all the time. But, so we have your clients show up about a half hour. Well, that's we're finishing. So let's say it's a normal size house, 2,000 square feet. We start at 9 and it's like minus 0.11. Um, there's lots of reasons for that. And one of them is your clients who are excited about this house do not need two hours of finding defects. It's emotionally draining. It hurts their heart. They're like, oh my God. <laughs> so unfortunately, that is our job to find problems. But just think, you know, you, you have a client, they get pre approved, side of models like doing this kind of number. You, you, who knows how many contracts you guys had to, had to put in before you finally got them accepted? And side of the level is he's accepted, and then a <sighs> side of us crashing down when we accept it, right? So, one, we're cognizant of that. But two, like your clients don't need to be there. And, like every house we do, like I was saying before, is going to find problems. Now, I, I try to point out to people, like if you were buying a used car, 1970 Camaro, like, and you were doing inspection on it. Well, a good inspector would be like, man, this thing's cool, it's got the extension, it's got that, it's got, now I did find this, but it's got these sweet new, so there's some, you, you do some both neutral things and positives and negatives, so that it's not just a half hour, but like, let me tell you, whenever you start looking at that. Uh, but yeah, I've done, I've participated in 15,000 inspections, I've never had a house that's perfect. I mean, even like, we might find six minor things, and oh, well, we got to really hard to find it, but you can see a little crack here in the floor and bottom side. Um, we don't write down cosmetic items, and I've started to see more and more of that where they're like, well, can you break down that? I'm like, actually, that's not really a, a thing that we need to write down. Again, we're there to evaluate the system. I mean, if I'm being really honest, like a cracked tile or floor, we'll write it down, you know, but it's kind of cosmetic. Like, it, it's really about the floor and the substructure is what we're looking at it's from a home inspector. Um, I got this great story where uh, 
We, it was a beautiful Sunday, but we could see residents in rain gutters where the gutters were leaking. And so we looked out and said, hey, even though it's not happening today, we can kind of see that the, the spring. Um, oh, so I was talking about the rain gutters, and you can see that they had like, leaked previously, even though it wasn't like raining or fixed, so it wasn't it didn't actually see it. But we were like, hey, those are probably leaking. Well, six months later, the client calls back to the client and goes, hey, the render is leaving the house. It's become way worse. It's coming to the house instead of the house. We said, yeah, we wrote that down. Because we didn't tell me it was going to get this bad. Like, well, I'm not a, I can't, like, read minds or foretell the future. So I wrote the thing down. You know, the best way to describe it is we color code all of our, our issues is blue, orange, or red. Red is that definition right now. Blue are, like, maintenance items, like paint and pop. And, um, <laughs> Orange items are kind of in the middle where like that full on yet, but like if you ignore all of them, some of them will become red down the road. And that's the best way to describe it. So if you ignore the mildly leaking gutter, which really is causing an issue right now, six months from now, potentially it's coming into the house and now you have this huge problem. So of course, out of the 15, 20, 25 orange items you find, there's no way for me to tell you which of those will become bigger issues in six months. Uh, so that covers. That. But again, we can only report what we see the day of, which I, again, as we take this class together, you're probably going to go, duh, like that's common sense, right? But you got to remember, most of the problems that when we have complaints, we need the house inspections in multiple states, um, you know, all across the country. Most of the complaints we have is because afterwards, the client says something to the realtor, and the realtor goes, What? Yeah, the inspector called because they don't want to have a tough conversation. They just go, Well, dude, all they could see was what they could see on the day out. Like, they're not, they're being really responsible for every little thing that comes up. So just keep that in mind when you're working clients. Uh, sorry. Um, So that it's important for your buyers to understand what we do and what we don't do. Like, unless they've paid extra to put a $12,000 camera in the sewer line, we obviously have no idea that the inside of the sewer line is. Uh, if, if, for example, two of the back bedrooms are locked, there's nothing I can do about that. Like, I just have to write down those bedrooms are inaccessible. Some of your clients don't want to hear that. And so you have to understand that we all have to work together as a team to tell them, hey, that's totally a reasonable thing, and that's on the listing side to get those back bedrooms up. Uh, okay, you've heard me mention it a couple times. Anybody put anything in the chat? All right, I'll check. I'll check the chat again at the end because that is just terribly obnoxious. Um, okay, when do we attend? There is kind of an old wives' tale where inspectors are like, well, Watch you follow me around, I'm gonna tell you, you know, because inspectors are guys and they like to mansplain and they like to be the smartest guy in the room. That's not the best way to do business. A couple of reasons why. A perfect analogy is if you're having surgery, do you want your mom talking to the surgeon during surgery or after surgery, right? It's after surgery, right? You don't want the mom in the ear of the surgery, but what how's it going? What's that look like? Is that a problem? Is that a big deal? So that's obviously if you're not doing surgery, but honestly, if I'm talking to you and I'm chatting with you, I'm not doing a thorough inspection. If I'm doing a thorough inspection, I'm not chatting. I think that if while you're drumming up your contract, putting on a house, if the client is like over your shoulder, like you should want to put that there, you should want to put that there, you're probably not going to write as good of a contract as you could. If you just had some piece of supplied in your office to write up the, the contract, right? Um, also, going back to the original, the, the thing I talked about before, if we, if I walk up to the outside of the house and I'm trying to document the fact that the drainage is sloping toward the house, like the house, and the client goes, well, "Is that a big deal?" Well, like I said, if I, if I don't know what the foundation looks like yet, if I don't know what the crawl space, if there is a crawl space, looks like, if I don't know what the inside of the flooring looks like. The attic structure, if there's damage, if the windows and doors close. I have no idea whether that's a five dollar problem or a five thousand dollar problem. And if I have to explain to your client the difference between the five dollar problem and the five thousand dollar problem, every single thing that we look at in the house, we're going to be there six hours 
not two hours. So for many reasons, it's smart for your client to come at the end. Let us focus on the house, evaluate the house, top to bottom, inside to out, so that we understand everything, we understand how everything, um, you know, is working together or not working together. And then that way, they can spend 20, 30 minutes on site, and they can learn everything they need to know about the house. We can ask whatever question they might have. And if you've not worked with us before, you'll see our reports have lots of educational, informational type things where, um, like, you can, sorry. Uh, we give like average placement costs, we give uh, how long things like the last like the lifespan, um, <laughs> great homeowner type stuff, it's all in there, so they have everything they need. And again, on site, 20-30 minutes to walk through, we'll answer every possible question they have. But if you turn a two-hour inspection to a six-hour inspection, we're gonna have to charge more money. So for many, many reasons. Plus, I'll tell you right now, if I have someone who follows me around, I'm more likely to miss something. That if I just have to ask myself for two hours, I can just focus, focus, focus. Report's done, they show up, they get an amazing experience as we walk around and show them. Um, and again, so yeah, so we'll have all the answers to tell you about it. I think that'd be plenty of clear. Okay, um, if you have no idea, these people are buying one million, two million, three million, four million dollar houses, and they still think, well, if the inspector found something, like you have to fix it, right? So again, it's your job as the realtor to make sure that they understand that really the inspection is a fact-finding thing for your clients. Like, you certainly, unless you tell me I'm wrong, will not be negotiating everything in the inspection. The idea is for them not to inherit problems unknowingly, and if something does come up that's beyond what you had anticipated when you made the offer on the house, those are the things you will limit your negotiations to. And they may even say, no, no, it's, that's your problem, I don't care if you're spending 1.4 million dollars. I mean, we found, we just did a four unit multiplex and the realtors all kinds of sideways because we found at least $100,000 worth that needs to get done uh, for it to be like electrically safe. And the seller's like, yeah, no, okay. like you pay top dollar and I'm not giving time. So again, it's all about negotiation. Um, there are no rules. So the one thing to remember, and again, people, once they're ingrained in the situation, they, they get all freaked out, right? But the reality is, if you bought a 1950 Corvette and it doesn't have seatbelts, then guess what? You don't have to put seatbelts in it. Now, you may choose to from a safety point of view, but you don't actually have to. All of the houses that were built, they were built when they were built and they were built by the rules that they were built. There's nothing that says just because you're buying a 1974 house, you need to rebuild the house in a way that they do today. Like you're going to inherit all of the 1974 construction, the electrical, this, that. So some of that stuff is no problems and we will tell your clients all about it, but those people are living in those houses today and there's no rules. So it's all a big gray world. Our job is again, it's a safety thing, it's to make sure they don't inherit problems with them. The best way to describe it, we're a home buyer advisor. So here, if you had a 17 year old niece, and she'd saved up $4,000 to go buy a used car. And she said, auntie or uncle, whoever, your name, will you go with me to look at this car? You're going to go, well, that long window doesn't work great, and the tire tread is pretty light. She goes, well, does the seller need to put new tires on? like, no, not necessarily. Uh, <clears throat> and then she's going to go, well, do I need new tires? You're like, well, you should go to the Flagstaff next weekend, so it's snowing. The new tires would make sense. Well, how much do new tires cost? Well, you've got $1,200 a good year, and you got $200 at nice use tires. Which one should I buy? And you just tap her on the shoulder and you go, so welcome to owning a car. You do whatever's right for you. Depends on your budget, depends on a lot of different things. I can't tell you how many times people look at me and go, What do I do? And I go, It's your house. Like, repair it, replace it. You know, it'll look nicer if you replace it. But it'll cost more. You could repair it and it won't look as great. But it'll be a little cheaper. But at the end of the day, welcome to ownership. Like, you can do whatever you want. Um, again, our job is to find the problems, document the problems, and then you as the realtor make sure that they're still paying the fair price that you negotiate in the first place. Okay. <clears throat> um, liability. I talked about this briefly. It's, if an inspector falls through the roof or breaks the window, then they're liable for that. That is their problem. They, 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 they were negligent and they caused damage. If they're operating the window and something happens to the window, they're not. That's the problem with the window. If they turn the stove on and something breaks the stove, that's, that's the stove. It's part of the problem. It's part of the inspection. 
like I said, if they if they if we if we push the button to operate the garage door and it falls off the rails, like we didn't break it, like it broke during the course of us testing it, and the inspector's not liable for that kind of stuff. It's bad luck, but it's also good luck for your buyer. It's bad luck for your seller because we found a defect. Good luck for your buyer because we found a defect. Um, <coughs> so, and I kind of already talked about these things. You know, I'll tell you another story. I had an agent years ago go, yeah, yeah, you can turn the water on, it's fine. So I go to turn the water on, I start running water in the kitchen, and I get this like sinking feeling, you know, that feeling where you're like, I don't know what's going on, but I feel like something not good is going on. And I, I open up the cabinets on the kitchen sink, and literally water's just everywhere. It's a big house, I don't have towels on me, and like basically somebody was working on all the plumbing under there, and the water was just everywhere because all the plumbing was taken apart. So these now I have permission to just turn the water on, but these are the reasons that sometimes the, the inspectors go, look, if we do five more inspections a month, there are safety reasons and other reasons that you know the water's not on, the electrical's not on. Again, a lot of times it's just because of the fireplace in the summertime. But there are times when there's a safety reason. So we can't go into some third party's house and start manipulating things and lighting pile valves and you know lighting fireplaces if we don't know the, the reason that's turned off. So again, as a listing agent, have everything as ready to go as you possibly can. If you're just if you were to sell a car, you want to make sure all the windows work, the doors work, AC works, the radio works, you know, you want to make sure you just have the oil change, whatever, just have it clean, um, save not a concept. Um, I wrote something to not turn out like, listen, we are limited. We're not, you know, again, I don't want to sound too snarky for those of you who don't know me, but like I, not only do I not know why the things not happening. But I kind of don't care because we do so many houses, we see so many defects. If it's not working, it's not working. I'm not there to diagnose every problem as to why it's not working. If the fridge is not making cold air for the fridge or the freezer, I just document that. I don't actually, I'm not concerned about the why behind it. Now, that being said, we are curious if we see leaks. I mean, we are trying to put all the systems together to make sure we understand how everything's working. But at the end of the day, the inspector's not there to fix the problem, the inspector's not there to diagnose necessarily the reason behind the problem. Sometimes the furnace is, I'll give you another great story about that in a few minutes. <clears throat> uh, I was doing a house, gas furnace, it was blowing out like 80, 90 degrees air, which normally would be over 100. And I thought, man, that's weird. It was only like a three year old furnace. And I said, well, look, it's been 40, three, four years old, and it has been serviced, and have it serviced. And just tell them it's kind of blowing cold air, not cold air, but like warm air. And you know that HVAC person will, will figure it out. Now, as it happened, we were doing a radar test in that house, and I went back two days later to pick up the radar test. And I said, and, and the HVAC guy ended up getting there and said, Hey, was that like sort of that cold air, like lukewarm air a thing, or was it not a thing? And he goes, Oh, dude, you never would have found it. He's like, it's two-stage furnace, the second stage wasn't kicking off, so it's kind of blowing air. Um it was kind of blowing, like just part of it was blowing hot air, the other part the way it should have. And he goes, then what happened was the square put the thermostat in, like got two of the wires and stuff. If you ever look at the inside of the thermostat, there's like 26 wires inside there, so it's very easy to do. But again, nobody would ever think, oh, well, the home inspector should start taking the furnace apart, and then maybe potentially start taking the thermostat apart as one, which is not what we do for a living. Um, two, obviously, this is some third party's house, so we don't have permission to do those kinds of things. To this person's house. But that's a perfect little example. We found a symptom of a problem, documented it, told you to bring in the expert. The expert got permission from the seller to do a deeper dive and start being an invasive, and then found a problem inside the thermostat of the wire. So that's exactly how that should have worked out. Uh, so that's it. Um, <laughs> our company is Specs or Coffee. We're way more thorough than the industry, like what, what's going on in the industry. Our reports have color coding videos. We do drone videos. Everybody that works with us is drone license. We do uh, uh, we do thermal scanning on every single inspection. Uh, we do a couple of extra reports. So we pull a property history report. Um, what else do we, do? we we do a recall report. So we pull all the serial model numbers, all the clients first water year. If there's any recalls on that stuff, the clients notify. That recall report, you can actually go into our system one time and put your favorite headshot and your, uh, your contact info, and every time the client gets that report, because once a month, it'll look like it's coming from you. So it's a nice way for you to stay in front of them, but if they do get something recalled, we fix for free, we replace for free, 
they'll be telling their neighbors that you have this program that does that for them. Um, so anyway, um, I'm just glad to see some attendees, and um, I appreciate it. I try to get, I want to be done in 45 minutes. I think we're right there. I'm going to pop open my echo chamber here and um, see if we've got any questions that I can answer. Um, yeah, Rona, sorry, I, I touched on it, but I didn't like make it its own subject. Um, I highly recommend, okay, there are attorneys out there that say as the realtor, you should just, just steer clear of the inspections to their time. But I would tell you that if you have a fiduciary responsibility to client, so part of that is like making sure that their hopes stay in check, that they don't, they don't do something weird. <laughs> so while I tell realtors, if your client's going to be on site with us for the last 20, 30 minutes of inspection, it's smart for you to be there too, like because you are their representative. You shouldn't like go, oh, I know the inspector said that, but that's no big deal because that'll get you in hot water. But what you should do is um, you should be there to listen so that two or three days from now, when they say, you know, because the client's super all emotionally charged up between buying a house and all the stuff you guys have to deal with before you get the title of warranties of the inspection, they might misremember something we said. And because you are not as emotionally charged because you're a professional helping them, um, you will be able to keep them around and go, no, no, I think what the inspector said was blank, or you know, it's an issue with the sewer line and we need to do X. Um, so if that I recommend the clients be there for the last 20, 30 minutes, do the walkthrough, see everything, know where everything's at. If anything big showed up, show them where that's at. We also point out interesting things to them. Where's the water shut off? Where's the guy shut off? Um, what are those ACIs and the electrical panel versus GCIs? Um, how's the roof? And again, it's just good for them not to mishear anything. And you can kind of be their eyes and ears if you're there with them. You know, I think what the inspector said what blank. So good question. Thank you for that. Any other uh, questions? All right, well, I hope I get to see everybody out there with their buyers and their sellers. And um, if no more questions, I will let everybody run. And thanks for uh, HomeSmart for letting me have this spot to do this training. All right, cheers. I'm going to hang up if there's no more questions. <laughs>